All right, old gatekeeper here. Got my buddy, uh, Spaceman's, uh, you see it, 667V Turbo Mod, two-thirds kilowatt. It's 600 watts, of course, pretty much. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. To be as old as this amp is, which is very old, we're talking about 25, 30 years old, easy. <laughs> it is in great condition. Somebody has kept this uh, in very good condition. It is very clean inside. It doesn't appear that anybody's uh, uh, straight out smoked anything in it yet. All the transistors appear to be They appear to be all uh, factory. Somebody's put little blue dots on them. I don't know why. Some people do that. Uh, I know people do that sometimes when they uh, send something in for a repair, so they can make sure he has it. You haven't swapped their transistors. The smart thing to do is use some uh, clear ink that you can only see with a black light. Yeah, that's a good. One. That's how you tap your text being truthful with you. <laughs> but anyway man these are old amps these are I'll tell you any way you can tell you got you an old amp on your hands if you look at the K screws anywhere where there's a screw that's going to be connecting the board to the chassis of the amp if you have a capacitor there instead of the screw being shunted to ground like all the new boards has a little trace that goes from this trace around the screw to ground as you see, we've got a capacitor there going to ground. Okay, that right there is the block DC. Because on older vehicles back in the days, there was what you would call positive grounded vehicles, meaning the vehicle itself was hot. It was positive. So the, the actual vehicle itself was positive. Pretty much switched. So, this case right here, and this heat sink would, would be positive instead of ground. That's why you got to have those caps to block them. Those are just simply blocking caps. That's all they are. Okay. Well, we're not in them days anymore. So whenever I get an amp like this, I always uh, go ahead and take all those caps out. And I uh, put little shortened bars in there to go ahead and ground the case. Because at this point, we don't have the case and the heat sink being used as ground there are a lot of beneficial quite, you know a few beneficial factors to, of doing that one thing you've got a good ground plane for your amplifier instead of just only relying on the ground plane of the boards plus you'll notice your uh, your signal may also sound a little bit better there's a good possibility of that there have been uh, a lot of tests uh, on other more wide banded amplifiers that when you do ground the heat sink and stuff like that that uh, your uh, third harmonic first third harmonic etc actually uh, go down a little bit believe it or not and in some cases it actually can go up it just all matters but it's, it's in my experience it's always best to go ahead and ground that frame and that heat sink to be utilizing that as a ground so anyway, man, uh, basically the way I got it <clears throat> was I only had one fuse, and the other fuse holder is nowhere to be found. So I don't even know if this amp works right now, and I would like to see if it does work at least before I get in here. We're going to be doing quite a few little modifications to it. Look at that double ganger right there, man. <laughs> you can see that sometimes in these older amps. Another thing is, like I said earlier, it does appear that these transistors are factory but you would find these old original 1x4s in Motorola's as well and the type of tune that this thing is utilizing is a Motorola tune you've got 390's on the output when you should have 1000's okay that would be 1200's for the newer Texas stars 
the input here are 1390s, I believe. Yeah, 1380s. Alright, you should have 1200s right there. The input. The input should be a 330. It's a 100. Goodness. We got a little split over here too, which I'm thinking they're using this right here to correct uh, some input SWR when when some of these attenuators are pushed in. And one of the biggest is the output combiner. On these older versions, what they would do is they would, instead of having the combiner here being soldered to, to the trace right here, you know, this trace leads this way, this trace right here, instead of having it soldered to this trace right here, they've got it to this little square right here. And you'll see this square. You'll see this square on all the regular boards. That, that little square is still there. It's just an isolated square. And as you can see, instead of taking this and just running it straight on this, this trace right here, they just got a piece of Teflon. And because they're using this piece of Teflon right here, they're having to throw a little bit more capacitance here to bring that uh, to correct the inductance since it's going through pretty much virtually a hundred ohm wire you can say so as I do with all these amps we're going to convert that with a uh, uh, with a metal clad like all Texas stars these days have feedback circuits are fine you know they're 47 that's completely adequate they haven't been charred or anything that looks good we're going to do all our solder all these tabs like we always do uh i'm gonna check this double gainer here and see how see how it looks i may or may not remove that uh, i'm gonna check this diode right here too uh let's see here we're doing a power wire upgrade check a couple of components in here i may take these out and replace them with teflon i'm gonna wait and shit and see uh the case is bent see that We've got a bend right here. We've got a bend right here. And we've got a little bend right here. Now the front face plate is virtually in great condition. It really is. It's shifted to the left a little. You see we've got a little gap right here. Um, this meter may still work. It kind of looks like it does. But we're going to have to replace that. And the way that these meters are, if you notice, to take bolts so we'll, we'll see what we got in stock here and uh, as you see they use all big whomping DM 1900 volt uh, silver dip micas but uh, like I said first I want to see if this thing works got this big wire right here too I'm going to remove this and just put a little thing there like they always use just a little protection bar just in case one of these negatives and I'm going to be installing comes loose and uh, there might be a few other things but I'm definitely gonna have to change the uh, wraps I think we've got an extra wrap on all the inputs I think the outputs are fine so I'm gonna have to take one wrap off the inputs we're gonna convert it to a modern day 500 uh, 667 excuse me I'm, I don't think I'm gonna go all crazy now I could get extravagant with this thing like I've done in the past and I mean literally just changing it dang everything but uh, stuff like this I mean I know all the attenuators are different than the modern Texas star I don't uh, modern 667 excuse me I don't think I'm gonna go in here and and take these out and replace I mean they they, they, they use five watts now what you see right here is uh, two two watts in parallel for example that is a 10 ohm there so they've got that down to a parallel five ohm I'm not too happy with this resistor right here I'm surprised now I'm surprised that thing ain't black, to be honest with you, because that does get, the, that does take some heat. It really does. That That is a 75 ohm, 6 watt resistor on, on most of the, or 5 watt on the normal 667s. I'm not too happy about it. You can tell this person probably didn't run it 
on low much or if they did run it on low they didn't run a lot of power into it that, that i've seen these charred on these older ones man i really have i've seen these charred too this is a 4.7 we got two 100s right here creating the 50 ohm which i believe utilizes when you got that in i'm gonna check the front knobs so anyway just kind of going through take a look at them Adel allen bradley 10 ohms hard to blow them bad boys i probably will be removing them and adding regular 10 ohms because you can't really tell if they're blown but i'm gonna check the bias first so i can't wait to see how much it i'll tell you one thing i don't see how in the world they can get 660, uh, 667 watts out of this out of these toshibas with the tune that's being utilized here i don't see it we've got 390s man on the output i don't see it i don't see it i that's why I'm wondering if Motorola's were in here at some time. But we have a Toshiba here, so what people may not know is, yes, they did start off with, with, with Motorola's. They had the two bilaterals, the 400, 500 bilateral. Then they created this right here, the first five transistor amplifier. And the first five transistor amplifier did have Motorola's in it. But at the end of that production line, they did start using Toshiba's. They discovered Toshiba's. So this is probably one of those before they uh, basically switched to the newer style 667's that came out. The way I look at it, we pretty much have three generations of Texas stars. Here's the first one. The second one is what we kind of call old Texas stars now. The one before the new ones you see with the new switches which started using the, uh, went from the Japanese soldiers over to the Chinese soldiers. <laughs> we'll be back. Let's get into this. First, I want to see if it's doing any power. All right, man, I am actually a bit surprised. Uh, the, the amp is actually working fairly good. It looks like this tune uh, worked out good for them. Um, pretty surprised, actually. But they did change it all. Um, like I said, once I get, uh, update this, I'm about to see what happens. Um, I will figure out what I'll do after that if I'm even going to go as far as taking wraps off because as of right now, the tune is very low and high. Um, you know, it's not putting out as much power as I would like, but it's doing about 500. The uh, bias is good on all the uh on on the one transistor section and both the two pills they're they're, they're where they're supposed to be thousand watt slug pep bottom scale oh a little bit past 500 watts rms thousand watt scale no oh, about 180 rms all right that's on high so it let's say it should be doing about 667 watts right now usually i can get about 667 watts off a of bench radio my, my small radio about four watts five watts drive rms about 20 watts peak but anyway uh yeah i'm gonna try not to replace anything in here i really don't feel like it's going to help anything out um but I'm pretty surprised. I think this box probably is a box somebody got and just didn't put a lot of use on it. I mean, I'll be honest. It appears maybe they just did not put a lot of use on it. And they probably just kind of hung around for a while. <laughs> and, but uh, we'll definitely uh, go ahead and update the output on it. And throw, uh, throw the metal clad we always use. What Texas Star uses. And... Uh, Get this thing positive, uh, get all the uh, caps off. So we have two grounds, uh, the frame and the heat sink will be grounded. All right, we'll be back. Let's get, get the old iron in here, man, get to work. Wow. All I can say is wow, spaceman. I am absolutely astonished. <laughs> absolutely astonished. I've uh, pretty much done all the modifications that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to get in here and uh, get in here and clean up everything a little bit, clean up flux and stuff, man. But uh, I hadn't replaced the meter yet. 
see that meter's working. Yeah, that meter's working. Gold. <laughs> it just ain't got a front and of course we're going to be putting a new meter on there I'm absolutely blowed away at, my, at how much more power this thing is doing and I'm going to be honest with you I haven't had many 667's on the bench that does this much output just on my little servo supply I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away look at this uh, we're on high okay variables all the way up check this out man thousand watt slug PEP this is absolutely amazing Do almost 800 watts man that is unbelievable the RMS was uh, ranks right in there with it look Do right there about 300 bird I am absolutely blown away that's the kind of output I'll get if I'll switch over to the 100 amp supply, I switch over that bad boy right now, man, this thing will be doing a kilowatt, 100%, 100% kilowatt. Got the full power wire upgrade done. I usually put the uh, uh, power, power, ground, ground, but I, I did it this way for a reason. Uh, I didn't feel like I'd have enough uh, room if this ground was right here to have to dodge this because the uh, splitter is a little bit more this way on this one so I went ahead and just um, staggered it like that right there so we got uh, you put on here that you want a 10 gauge on the transformers I don't think I've ever done that before for somebody here you go man 10 gauge Teflon this stuff ain't the easiest stuff to work with I'm gonna tell you that right now <laughs> and uh, barely got this stuff down in here that's some big wire man that's some big wire for sure and uh, we're rolling with some good uh, 14 gauge right here on the driver section. I went ahead and threw your 330s down here. All right, so put 330s. I didn't have any on here, so put 330s on there. There's your metal clad. If you can see it. Went ahead and did all the uh, uh, sh shorted every single screw to the uh, to the frame, as you can see. Every single screw. You see where is this one at? Down here. This one was tough to get to, but I got to it. So far. This is all the parts that come out of it. I don't have them all organized like I normally do at the end of the video, but I went ahead and replaced all the 10 ohms that were in there. I took these Allens out, you know, they're old. Took the diode out, it was in the way, I put another diode in there. You can't really see it because it's up under that power wire, but you see it right there. And uh, took some of these old 104s out right here and put some new style 104s which are these yellow ones right down here little old, older caps like these silver dip micas right here there's no reason to take them out and replace them they're good to go I man I took a couple out uh, check the values check the values on the inputs here uh, we're leaving these in man this thing's rocking dude the way I look at it, if it ain't broke don't fix it and this thing is, I'm blown away, man. I'm absolutely blown away. I'm blown away. I, I, you don't see this with every 667. These is, this is just one of them things, man. It's just a mystery. It's like when all the stars align just perfectly. That's what's going on here. Go about 800. Go. What's this thing talking to if I just get out there talking? About 250? Go. They can about 80. He can't beat that with a stick, man. Medium. Go oh, a little bit past 600. Go oh, about 200 bird. Low before turning the variable down. Go oh, about 400. Go oh, about 100 bird. 
from that point you can start turning the variable down if you want to. Gold. I didn't turn it down though. Gold. 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 And it starts coming on down, on down, on down. Alright, forgot to shade the input tune. Which I did have to adjust. That's the only thing uh, tuning wise other than the output. 5 watt slug, this is on high. Dude, almost virtually no input replay. Dude. Alright, big brother. We gotta add your fan kit now. I'm gonna get in here and uh, clean it up a little. This thing is smoking, son. Smoking! Went ahead and installed, uh, like this say, this is an older Texas star, so there wasn't a hole here. We'll put you a little fan sticker back there for you. I think I may put you a new sticker uh, back here on top of that. Um, yeah, I think I may go ahead and do that. But they actually use a thinner speak, uh, sticker now instead of putting it up on the heat sink like that. Uh, oh yeah, I need, I'm need. i going to put you a new uh, the uh, SSB. I threw that in the trash, didn't I? Yeah, I did. The SSB uh, lens cover was uh, just old, man. It kind of wasn't staying on that well. I'm going to put you a new one on there. I may put you a new power on there too, man. These do fade out over time. So I'll do that, man. I get the fan kit on there. I'm about to make you one. I already got it, uh, got it drawn out for doing that. I know you said you wanted a new top cover, possibly. This top cover has seen better days. If it wasn't all dent up like this right here, I'd just paint it for you. But it is dent up. So we'll see what we can do, man. I might, I don't usually just give away top covers. I mean, I can sell them, but I usually use them for my fan kits. But uh, I'll see what I got in the old uh, grab bag over here, as they say. We'll see you, man. I'm going to do a little bit of swimming. Bye-bye. All right, brother. One thing I did forget to mention on camera is you want the, you want the blue... You're gonna light that meter up blue. So we're gonna do the uh, LED meter kit. The LED meter kit, the blue LED meter kit. What's so crazy, man, is this bad boy right here has had the cover off for who knows how long. And it still works. It still works just fine. But the, the numbers are all faded on it, you know, so it's pretty much trash now. Well, anyway, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and retrofit one of these new meters. Plus, if I'd have left that one in, it probably wouldn't have passed uh, color in it real well. So they got these these meters right here branded, man. You know, they got Texas Star right there inside. So. Uh, When I started doing these mods, what I started doing at first is I would take and I would drill a hole right here. And I would do it very, very, very carefully. Very carefully. And I would drill a hole just enough so I could see through to the mechanism in there to coil. And I would put a three millimeter or sometimes a five millimeter clue blue LED with just a resistor big enough so it wouldn't blow it if it was on about 15 volts. And that would light the mist meter up very well. But uh, since then I've uh, using a little bit better of a way because I have damaged a meter or two drilling them like that. Sometimes when you drill you'll have a little piece of plastic that will get down in there but I'm using uh, strips now and they seem to light it up a lot better. And sometimes I'll do a strip and I'll drill and put a little three millimeter LED in there to light up the bottom here a little bit better. But you know you don't want you don't want to put so much. You don't want to light this up so bright that you can't see the numbers. But this is just relative. You know these are pretty much you're looking at at, at, at uh, amperage here pretty much in a sense. 10 equals 0.10 milliamps if I remember correctly. I'll have to look at my notes. So I mean it is an actual reading. I want to say it's amperage is what we're looking at here. It could be voltage. I hadn't uh, read that in a while. But 
There's an actual science behind how the Texas Star designed these meters. All right, bud. So we're gonna get that in, get that LED retrofit, and start building your your fan kit. And uh, I did find you. You got lucky, man. found one lid well that what I was just showing was sitting inside of a lid but look at that fresh from Texas star man I found one lid that I hadn't measured up for a fan kit yet and like I said I, I, I normally won't do this because every kit I get I'll drill them I'll drill them and prepare them for fan kits the, the second I get them for some reason I just didn't prepare this one and I didn't prepare that one right there either so usually I'll just tell the person to go grab one off the internet but yep it appears Texas Star is now doing it like this they don't have that vinyl covering on there this right here is uh, let's see here I don't believe that's a regular paint I believe it's powder coated. Because I mean, you can sit here and try to scratch this, man, and it just. So it looks like they're powder coating their, their tops now. Same dimensions, same materials, it's not aluminum. It's still real thin steel, so got your brand new top right there, bud. This thing's gonna be completely, uh, redone and refurbed but believe it or not I left a lot of the internal circuitry the same that's what kind of blew my mind of how well it is working meaning I did not take a wrap off the input transformers I did have to retune the input of it uh, I threw a 91 um, metal clad on the output I was doing this with uh, silver dip mica first I don't you know a little bit easier to do it that way than put the clad down but and I threw 91 on there that's what they got in their schematics but they actually use hundreds just to let everybody know Texas Star uses hundreds instead of 91s when you see that metal because the hundreds are more readily available so anyway I did have some 91 metals though and then I threw a hundred down and that hundred did a little bit better and the reason I think if you remember this is the reason I think that so I think it had like a 22 peak of fairy cap right here to ground right here. And I guess that, you know, they, they basically do that when they do these 250s back here. Some of the boxes may just need a little bit more capacitance, so they'll put it right here. So I guess that's why that 100 worked a little bit better. And uh, I, I did put a little trimmer right here just to make sure, see if it needed a little bit more, and it didn't. So there you go, brother. I still can't get over how well this box is performing, man. You got you a good box right here, Mr. Spaceman. We'll be back. You got the blue done, buff. Now would you look at that? Would you look at that? Oh, that's one notch before it hits the ten. So I, I guess you can say when you get a kilowatt out of it, it may be doing ten. Then who knows? But I'm lucky that I didn't have to adjust the uh, the resistor that sets this um, variable. Or it needs some these older boxes. Sometimes I have to adjust them and uh, add a little bit more resistance. Oh yeah! All right, man. I went here and cleaned up a, a lot of flux out of here for you too, man. This thing is uh, looking very nice. Very nice. I got in here and the uh, lights off right now, but got in here and cleaned up a lot of gook, a lot of flux little pieces of solder etc etc I gotta drop the old gatekeeper product logo right there drop the new uh, 
little gatekeeper shield logo on the top for you. It should stick to that just fine. But now I'm hitting the bed, man. Two o'clock, got to get up early and get to working out. Yep. No GK starting to work out every other day. Every day, but actually working, working out every other day. When you get to sitting at this bench right here for 10 plus years, not doing no physical activity other than with the sweet one, which I ain't got right now. That's where you go, down the gutter. Get all fat and chubby. Get all out of shape. Yeah, it caught up with me. And a lot of y'all had to wait almost six months longer because of my health. So I'm done with that. So I'm getting myself back right. We'll be back with the finished product, man. Fan kit, blue LED fans, everything you asked for. That's what I do. All right, brother, got your fan kit cut. Took me about two and a half hours. Powder coated case. Get the feet on there. Now the only thing bad about these fans is they have quit making them. They are the absolute fastest, fastest, fastest LED fan I have ever laid eyes on for the price. Bar none. But I only get them in one color. That's all that's left. So whenever I have to do uh, LEDs other than green that I buy them in, I have to manually change the LEDs. <laughs> so yeah, it takes a little bit more time and labor, but do what you got to do. So just took the green ones out of these, testing their blue. Oh, all four working. All right, on to the next. All right, Mr. Spaceman. Here she goes, big brother. Another 10-8, beautiful looking Texas star. Going back into the system. The system? The system of... RF uh, radio operators out there. The camera looks a little blurry. Maybe I need to turn some light on out here. Alright, alright. Ooh. There we go. Oh, I knew I forgot something. I forgot to put your fan sticker back there. Went ahead and put your new uh, antenna transmitter sticker on for you. Just put it over the old one. Got your uh, GK emblem right there. It'd be sweet to have them eyes lighting up with the transmit, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Like I said, I had to make this kit for you, man, because I had one kit already made up, but wasn't blue LED fans like you requested. So that is the uh, GK dual fan kit. One of these days, I hope to put these in production. Got you that fresh powder coat here, pal. Powder coated. You're going to start seeing these a lot more, man. I do like the powder coat, especially with amps like this that may be moved around a whole lot. You can sit here and scratch this with your fingernail, man. Ain't going to be no scratches left on it. All right, brother. I'm going to throw that fan uh, sticker on there, bud. And uh, things look beautiful, man. I'm going to take a few pictures of it. I like to put it on my little white freezer. 
out there and take pictures of it. Plus, if I ever want to do some editing with some pictures and remove the background later, it'll make it a lot easier for me. All right, man. Another Texas Star 10-8. Got the other set of Anderson right here with the fingers. Send them with you. Let you use them as you wish. Appreciate you hanging in there with me, buddy. Mr. Spaceman OGK out here doing my thing the best way I can. We good and gone. Bye-bye. God bless. 73rds. Just one more quick one. Go. 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 Thing smoking, man. This is what the voltage turning down 13.2 volts, too, man. Whew. Wish this bad boy was mine. I'm going for good now, y'all. Just had to kill it one more time before we put the screws in it. I'll be back. Oh, wait, wait. I won't be back on this one, but I will be back on another one. Deuces, fellas.